What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the JW Sports Talk Show. Raven fans, welcome. And today we're talking about Bryce Young versus CJ Stroud. Who will the Indianapolis Colts draft? Who should they draft? So both of these guys have their downfalls. Both of them have some fantastic positives. And that is why they are such great prospects and they are high up on this list. So we're going to talk about the safer option in a lot of people's eyes. That 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 is Bryce Young. And a lot of people think that the Colts are going to go for a safer option. The safer option because, you know, Chris Ballard is is, is under fire. Um, just basically, you know, yeah, Chris Ballard's under fire. And Jim Arce wants to win now. He is pissed off. He's not happy. So they need to go find someone that can do it now, that can do it quick enough. And they think that C.J. Stroud can be that guy. But, you know, I don't think C.J. Stroud is the safest option in this draft. I do not think C.J. Stroud is a safe option at all. So you look at C.J. Stroud's tape, and you know he has some phenomenal things in there. His accuracy is good. His mechanics are pretty good. Um, you know he's he's a number one overall p prospect. If you exclusively look at the Georgia game, all those weaknesses that he had previously that everyone was talking about, those were an issue. Those became strengths, and that is worrisome because you know if you could do it, I mean. Like, see, it's something you go back and forth on. It's really weird. If you can do it against a Georgia Bulldogs defense that is the most NFL caliber defense that you will find in college football, then, you know, why do you struggle to do these things against lesser talents? Why do you struggle to do these things against just college football teams that are just not as good? But you did it against Georgia, the most difficult program to do it against, the most difficult defense to do it against. It's puzzling, but, you know, Stroud, you know, the weaknesses that, you know, I kind of mentioned that, you know, we, we, his weaknesses became strengths in, in the um, Georgia game. Some of the weaknesses that I came from, that I came away from the tape is that, um, you know, he has a hard time creating, he's not very good under pressure, and, um, he, you know, his reads are solid, but his reads were much faster, much better in the Georgia game is he just better under pressure well I I just kind of that's kind of a paradox there. I kind of contradicted myself so is he better in big moments and big games like George like like against like you know against bigger talent maybe but it comes in the NFL you you know it just doesn't work like that and those were some of the biggest issues we saw on tape so it's just very puzzling how he does that against one of the best defensive programs in the entire college football league. And then he can't do as nearly as good as a job against much lesser talented programs than Georgia. It's mind boggling. Mind boggling. So is he a safe option? No, he's not. He's one of those quarterbacks that, you know, if there were crazy quarterback needy teams, Anyways, I could see him ranging from four from the, you know, maybe the Texans. Maybe he goes to Texans. You know, I think a solid NFL comp is Jared Goff. And I think you can win with C.J. Stroud on his rookie contract. After that, that's where it's be, that's where it's going to become dicey on paying him. You don't know how he's going to be. I mean, you don't know that with any rookie. But at the end of the day, C.J. Stroud, um, I think he's going to be a standard, solid quarterback. I don't think he's going to be anything insane i don't think he's gonna be great you know yeah he looked great against the georgia bulldogs in the biggest game of his career but he couldn't do it against lesser competition and that's that 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 puzzles me that can't happen that can't be like that in the nfl you have to do it every sunday every week you know and it doesn't matter who you're playing it doesn't matter if you're playing the best team in the nfl or the worst you need to win every single game you need to play your best every single game much easier said than done but that's the truth. That's the truth. You can't just play great in the big games. You have to win those small games too against lesser talented teams. It's just how it works. You know, if you want to be up there in the seedings with the best teams, you have to beat those teams that aren't as good so you're with them. So you have those wins in the win column. It doesn't matter. You know, sometimes at the end of the day, you know, it matters who you win, who you beat, but you need to be consistent and have a consistent record. To get far. So, 
that's CJ Stroud. I, you know, if we stay at four, I am convinced. I will not be surprised if that's who the Colts get. And I just explained to you what he was in college and what you're getting. That's CJ Stroud. Now you have Bryce Young, quarterback for Alabama. CJ Stroud for Ohio, for Ohio State. I apologize, I did not mention that, but I assume if you've been following draft content, you know. Bryce Young, his tape is the app is is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's it's some of the best tape that that, that, you, that you will get. It's by far the best from any quarterback coming out this year. But size, 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 size is an issue. It's scary. When Devontae Smith was coming out, right? Size was worrisome, but what we you know when it comes to his position, wide receivers, you know, it's not really. I think it's blown out of proportion, and it could be for quarterbacks as well. But let's talk about Devontae Smith for a minute. The Eagles wide receiver, he was drafted in the first round, and everyone thought he's way too small. Now when you Go and you weigh in at one sixty six. You you know that's 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 concerning. You know sometimes you draw a line, and with Bryce Young coming in, at, he's probably gonna come in at like one eighty something like that, maybe a little over. It's scary. He weighs less than Kyler Murray, and he's barely taller than him. If he is, he is taller than Kyler Murray, but he weighs less, and that's scary. It's scary. It's the same with Bryce Young. You know, it kind of you know you kind of draw the line at the weight, and you know, with these three hundred pound linemen barreling on him and hitting him, you know, quite a few times a game, especially if he's going to go to one of these teams, you know, at the top where they don't have good offensive line, like um, let's say uh, Houston, let's say um, Indy. Indy's offensive line wasn't good last year. Are they going to be better this year? I don't know. Depends, you know, we have to see what happens and what transpires throughout the offseason. Is, um, what else was he going to say? Houston's offensive line is not good. He's going to be hit a lot. And by the time you're built, if the team is built, he's already going to have injury issues. Is he going to be able to stay healthy when the team is built? So then you're wasting everything else on that team when you're ready to race to the quarterback's talent. You, I mean, you didn't waste it. Technically not having an offense line, you know, him being smaller, it's kind of a mixture of both, okay? So, it's just, you know, if Bryce Young, as many have seen and said, if Bryce Young was six foot two, six foot three, and, and, and like 200 pounds, he would be a generational prospect. Everyone would be all over him. But do you want to trade up for a guy that you have doubts about. Do you want to trade this year's first? Well, well you're going to swap this year's first. Are, are you going to swap it? Are you going to trade a first for next year? A second for next year? And maybe a third for this year? And, you know, may, and may, may, maybe a solid player. Do you want to trade for a guy that is smaller? He's going to have durability issues through the long term of his career. That, you know, being 5'10. If he is that, that's what he's listed as. That's what he's listed as. Listed as, if I could speak, 5'10". It's crazy small. And when you have quarterbacks that are much shorter, they have much more limitations than taller quarterbacks would. Much more limitations. And is his body going to hold up? That's that that that, that my, his play is not my question. He has poise in the pocket. He has accuracy. He has a good arm, and I don't know where this narrative is coming from that Bryce Young does not have a good arm. He has good release. He has some velocity in the ball. Just because he's small doesn't mean he has a bad arm. He has a good arm, a solid, strong arm. You now it's nothing like Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, but it's a solid arm. You don't need a Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen as arm talent to be great. You don't. Drew Brees didn't have it. Drew Brees did not have great arm strength. Great arm. 
string. That, yeah. Some of the great quarterbacks that didn't. Peyton Manning didn't have insane arm strength. Like, he was so smart up here. He knew what he was doing with the ball. He knew what the defense was doing. That's why he was great. He was always one step ahead of the competition, of the opposition. Always. And, you know, on top of that, he had a good, accurate arm. And, you know, he worked for it, as these guys do. But Bryce Young, you know, when you actually do watch the tape, he's tough. Stands in the pocket. And he has a good arm. Don't listen to any of that bull crap that you hear on, on social media. He has a good arm. And, you know, back to the size thing. Being 5'10", this is the smallest quarterback that is coming out of the draft this high. But that was projected to go this high. Smallest, you know, the shortest quarterback in quite a few years. Now, Russell Wilson is really short, right? But he was 30 pounds heavier than Bryce Young. And, you know, it seems like Kyler Murray, the Russell Wilson type of ball. The NFL is just figuring it out. When you're too short, when you're five foot ten, and the linemen are and the linemen in front of you are six foot five, six foot seven, eight, even six foot four. You know, some of these six foot five quarterbacks, it's not that easy to see straight over them. It's not. It's not. So, you know, a quarterback that is five ten, like Bryce Young or Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, they have to find ways to read the to See the middle of the field better. You know, r r r r I apologize for my concern. Russell Wilson has scrambled out. Kyler Murray has gone wild. He just goes wild. Okay? But, and it makes it that much more difficult to scheme, to just put a scheme together. When a team could just cover the boundaries, not have to worry about the middle as much. Makes it easier. Makes it easier on the defense as well. Now, now, Bryce Young, he's good at not taking hits either. No, I said, you know, I'm extremely worried about his size and his durability. He's he's good at avoiding hits. A lot of young quarterbacks don't have that. Bryce Young has that. He's good at avoiding hits. Avoiding hits. He will avoid a hit. He will not take unnecessary hits. But then in a day, you're going to have to take some hits. You're going to have to take some nasty hits. And is his 180-pound, 5'10 frame going to be able to hold up longer than four years in the NFL? Look at Lamar Jackson, the way he runs. He takes a lot of big hits. He's 6'1", and he's over 200 pounds. Does, and he's starting to have injury issues already. He's been hurt last two years, towards the end of the year. He's been hurt. Kyler Murray, hurt all the time. You know, in a decent amount of time. It just goes to show. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that size, you know, six foot five, Josh Allen, 230, 40, 50 pounds, whatever. I don't know what he is. Somewhere around that range. I know it just gave you big range, but <laughs> I'm, I'm saying size doesn't equal great durability. Size doesn't equal durability, but when you're that smaller, it's just more likely, it's more typical for that quarterback to get hurt, to have injury issues. So, you know, I'm not willing to trade up for Bryce Young. I'm not. I know I've said in the past that, you know, I'd be willing, the only quarterback in this draft that's worth trading up for is Bryce Young. I take that back. I take that back. I'm not, I'm not giving up, you know, multiple firsts. You know, seconds, thirds, a solid player. For a player that might not even last longer than four or five years in the NFL because of injuries. You just don't know. Yeah, you don't know. He can be great. He may not get injured. He may not get injured that much. But I wouldn't trade up for someone like that. That has that big risk factor. That's that that that's being reckless. Now if Jim Irsay is making the call. It's probably going to be a trade-up for Bryce, for Bryce Young. Chris Ballard should say, put where you are. Take C.J. Stroud. It's it's probably who we're going to take. Now, I would 
Love. Absolutely love. There's two other routes I would love to take in this draft. It's just not going to happen because Chris Ballard is under pressure. Jim Ursay wants to win now. One of them. Draft an edge rusher. Draft one of these guys that are going to be insane on the line. You don't need to re-sign Unique and Gotway, okay? He is good in the pass game. He's inconsistent at times. Doesn't show up sometimes. Not good in the run game. He's not horrible, as everyone thinks he is, but he's not good. So if he comes back on a friendly deal, bring him back. At the end of the day, you want someone that can play all downs. Quiddy Pay can play all downs. So now, now Quiddy Pay isn't near the, doesn't have anywhere near the pass rushing ability as Nick has yet. He can play all downs. He's an um, he's an elite run blocker. He's a he's an elite run stopper, not blocker. He's on defense. But Quiddy Pay. He's elite, elite, and doesn't take plays off, plays through the play, and he's getting better at pass rushing. Now imagine having Buckner, Stewart, Quiddy Pay, Will Anderson, or Jalen Carter on the outside. Will Anderson will be is more of an outside guy. Jalen Carter is more of an inside, kind of everywhere type of guy. Will Anderson on the outside, Quiddy on the other side, Buckner and Stewart in the middle. Tell me that would have been great. But you would have the uproar, and I would be willing to maybe take a chance on Hendon Hooker, maybe take a chance on Tanner McKee later in the draft. No, I'm, I'm not crazy high on Tanner McKee. I'm not crazy high on Hendon Hooker for some reasons. Hendon Hooker is a fun prospect. He's a fantastic prospect, but having that injury, being older, there are a lot of different factors that go into you know, what I think about Hendon Hooker. He has some atrocious tape in there. He does. Anthony Richardson is the other path that I would maybe take. You know, and then, no, let's focus on the last one still. So maybe you go with the net rusher and then you draft the quarterback later. If he doesn't turn out, he doesn't turn out. Whatever. He's your starter for the year. You, you you know, you try it on that, but you have a better defense line. is more consistent. And then next year when you have guys like um, Caleb Williams, Drake May, guys that I'm higher on all of these guys. I like both of those quarterbacks better than these Two, three, four, whatever you want to consider the top. Okay, I'm not gonna argue with you, argue with you with that. But draft one of the guys next year. Draft the edge rusher this year. That would be better in my opinion. And you know it would cause an uproar because we're tired of this quarterback carousel. But the truth is, this year, really, before you know, before I say this, no one's safe. No prospect is safe at all. Never is. But, next year you have better prospects or are just better on the board. I'm not saying they have better tape than Young. I'm not saying they're just better pure football players. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, the, you know, Caleb Williams have some size to him. More than Bryce Young. Drake May. Like him. Like him as a prospect. I'm not incredibly wildly high on any of these guys coming out this year i love some traits that stroud has i love some traits that right that young has i love some things that will levis does but i don't love a lot of things that that levis doesn't do he doesn't do a lot great very bad decision making doesn't have it up here has the arm anthony Richardson is just a big shot in the dark he has a lot of talent. He has all the physical tools in the world to be one of the best quarterbacks. The, one of the best physically gifted quarterbacks that we've seen. Now, does he have it up here? We don't know. And he didn't play much. So it's hard to evaluate and give a solid take on a guy when he's barely played. Richardson, yeah, he's inaccurate. He... You know, his mechanics are off sometimes. He's He just doesn't have it up here, his, his, his decision-making. He can't read coverages prior to plays. Now, that does come with less experience, but if you look at some of the better quarterbacks in the NFL, some of the better ones in history, they played four years of college. They played more in college. Just the quarterbacks that are more experienced typically translate better than the ones with less. There is so much that just goes into, you know, comparing quarterbacks. Who should be the quarterback of the future? 
There's so much that goes into it. So much. It's so it's the most difficult prospect or the most difficult task in sports entertainment and sports history to go and find a quarterback that will lead your team for the next 10 to 15 years like a Patrick Mahomes. You just don't find Patrick Mahomes growing on trees. You don't find Tom Brady's growing on trees. You don't find Aaron Rodgers growing on trees. Um, Big Ben's, you know, and and you know, in their time, Big Ben was phenomenal. Um, Brett Favre threw a lot of interceptions, yeah, but he was a pretty damn good quarterback. Kurt Warner wasn't even drafted. There's so many examples out there with. Quarterbacks will just have more experience, and you know whether they've been drafted in the first or they were undrafted, they bec- they went on to become stars. It's the most difficult task to go and find the franchise guy for the next ten to fifteen years. Then you have to worry about paying him, building around him, winning in the rookie year, protecting him. There's so much more that goes into it than just looking at the stats and just looking at what, um, you know, just the stats. There's so much more to that. You have to look at trades. You have to go and watch film. Highlights don't equal tape. Please, drill that into your head. Highlights don't equal tape. That's my last message for the day. I kind of went on a rant, kind of went wild on some of these quarterbacks, but um, it was needed. It was needed. Um, I wanted you guys to know, to know the most that you could about the top two prospects, the top two guys at the Colts, you know, Chances are, chances are 90% of one of these two guys, 95% of one of these two guys are going to be a Colts quarterback for next year and a few years. You don't know. But at least next year. Probably two. You know, you just don't know. The NFL is wild. You don't know if quarterbacks, you know, Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen. Drafted, what, eighth or ninth overall the next year. You, you know, the Cardinals trade him to Miami for a second round pick and they draft Kyler Murray at number one. That's another thing I want to talk about real quick. Bryce Young, number one to the Bears. I don't think Bryce Young is a guy you want to, you know, I think he's a better, you know, I, I, I think he's a better player. I think he has better tape than Justin Fields, but are you willing to move on from Justin Fields and go to Bryce Young? Absolutely not with the hype. Absolutely not. I think Justin Fields stays put. It's a logical, logical reason. It's a logical situation in play for him. No need to draft a guy like Bryce Young or CJ Stroud and be like, oh, we need to give Fields some competition. Oh, this guy is way better than him. No one in this draft is a much better prospect than Justin Fields was coming out. That's it. That's all I got. I'm finally done. So, I thank you for tuning into the JW Sports Talk Show where every fan is welcome. And if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like drop us up ring that bell put the post notification bell on so you do not miss any future colts content and foul content i promise this is a place for you thank you for tuning in to the jw sports talk show where we can welcome jw sports talk show signing off <laughs>